Yellowstone earthquakes, magnitude 2.6 and 2.0, strike at Old Faithful Geyser, and recently 17 quakes in one day, as USGS reports. Well, looking at Sizemore Berkeley, which I like because it has even the tiny quakes there, we've had a tremendous amount of quakes all along from Yellowstone radiating north to Montana, south all the way down to Utah, and north of uh, Arizona, all these having to do with Yellowstone. In the past, we've seen that even southern Utah quakes, a few moments later, we would have a Yellowstone quake radiating all the way up from south to north. And now these two quakes having to do with Old Faithful, the first one was around 4 in the afternoon, 4.12 in the afternoon, at a magnitude 2, 14 kilometers west of Old Faithful Geyser, Wyoming. It was 8.4 kilometers in depth. And a few hours after that, we had 1.5 kilometer depth in Montana of a magnitude 2.4. So all this has to do with the same exact day and we have earthquake swarms uh, ongoing, of course, there. Now, recently we had 17 quakes in one day. As according to USGS report, Yellowstone supervolcano in February alone was struck by 81 earthquakes. 17 tremors erupted on a single day. This was a shocking USGS report. The activity report that has been found, this is on uh, Express UK by Sebastian Ketley. I'll leave links below for you so that you can see. Yellowstone supervolcano earthquake monitoring stations recorded 81 tremors in the National Park seismic activity for February, including a terrifying quake swarm which struck just north of West Yellowstone in Montana. As we saw, the bigger quake after the 2.0, the bigger quake of 2.6 was in Montana, directly north of the uh, Old Faithful of uh, Yellowstone. Now, the earthquake swarm at that point saw 17 tremors of varying strength hitting the National Park. And according to a USGS report, the strongest of the swarm tremors peaked at a strength of 1.7. That was on February 20th. Well, now these uh, yesterday's reports, yesterday's quakes were 2.0 and 2.6 a couple of hours later. A much stronger event was recorded February 16 when a magnitude 3.1 tremor was felt 16 miles south, south of uh, Yellowstone. USGS said during February 2019, the University of Utah seismograph stations responsible for the operating of the, and the analysis of Yellowstone, located 81 earthquakes in the Yellowstone National Park region. I'm sure that there's a lot more that were recorded as opposed to reported. The USGS does not report every single earthquake. There are, though, uh, seismic stations, seismographs that record all the time. Now, the largest event, says here, was a minor earthquake of 3.1 located 14 miles south of West Yellowstone, Montana, February 20, uh, 16th at 2.22 p.m. The earthquake was recorded, reportedly felt at uh, Yellowstone. And February seismicity, as we said in Yellowstone, included the swarm of the 17 local earthquakes, February 20th. The swarm events range from a 0 0.1 magnitude to a 1.7 magnitude located five miles north of West Yellowstone, Montana. However, overall seismic activity at the Yellowstone supervolcano remains at background levels. USGS also assured earthquake swarms are a typical occurrence in the region. At least 50% of all earthquakes in Yellowstone strike in the form of swarms. Despite the frequent earthquakes, authorities have not noticed any significant changes in ground deformation throughout the park. GPS stations have recorded ongoing subsidence of the Yellowstone volcano caldera, but the movement matches rates established in 2005. So we know there's subsidence of the caldera, but the Norris Geyser Basin, where we have the steamboat geyser, is uh, rising. And also we have a change in the steamboat geyser eruptions, 
We've had just about 40 of them up to now, since the beginning of uh, last year. 30 were, uh, took place in 2018, and 10 alone took up to, uh, place up to now, in 2019. So, yeah, it's as they said, the caldera is, uh, has substance, substance, but the uh, Norris geyser is rising. It's deforming and rising. And, of course, Norris is found in the caldera. Now, the USGS said the supervolcano's caldera is slowly, slowly dropping at a rate of a few millimeters per month, except, of course, for the Norris geyser uh, basin. Now, in the end of uh, month of February, there were also four eruptions of the steamboat geyser in February alone, and the USGS recorded scorch blasting water February 1st, 8, 16, and 26, roughly one every week apart. Now, we know that Yellowstone has 60% of all the geysers worldwide. They're all found here in Yellowstone. The geological agency said discharge measured at the Tantalus stream gauge suggests that these eruptions may have been smaller than past events of the current sequence, which started March 2018, although it's difficult to confirm this without direct observations. And with limited signs of volcanic activity at background levels, the current warning elsewhere Yellowstone is normal, meaning the supervolcano is behaving in a non-eruptive manner. And according to Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, which is located there, it's a branch of USGS, a major earthquake is the biggest threat currently facing the volcano. Michael Poland, who is uh, chief scientist of the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, warned that a magnitude 7 or higher earthquake is bound to happen before a volcanic super eruption. He said the biggest concern we have for Yellowstone is not with the volcano, it's with earthquakes. Okay, but we may not have a super eruption, we may have a minor eruption. Now, he said, he goes on to say, this is an underappreciated hazard in the Yellowstone area. There can and will be, in the future, magnitude 7 earthquakes, he says. Now, is Yellowstone volcano overdue another major eruption? There are currently no indicators suggesting activity at Yellowstone is building up towards the super eruption. Evidence of past eruptions suggests Yellowstone erupted uh, 640,000 years ago, 1.3 million years ago, and 2.1 million years ago. It had a smaller eruption about 70,000 years ago, and it's had about 50 or so eruptions of lava flows. Now, according to USGS, Geologist Jake Lowenstern, this suggests Yellowstone is not due another blast for tens of thousands of years. They're talking about the super blasts. He said, when you see people claiming it's overdue, usually the numbers they come up with say that the last eruption was 640,000 years ago, but that erupts, uh, that it erupts every 600,000 years, and therefore it's 40,000 years overdue. But in fact, if you average the eruption intervals, there's 2.1 million, 1.3 million, then there's another uh, eruption at 640,000 years ago, then those numbers would average, you come up with something like over 730,000 years. So in reality, if you tried to make this argument, it wouldn't be due for another 70,000 years or so. I'll leave a link below for you for this. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation 
with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.